In this video, we'll go through some actual video footage from the course titled Pattern, Piano, and Keyboard. This course will teach you to play any song on the piano or the keyboard by ear without having to read notes at all using the revolutionary technique of rhythmic patterns. This overview will start at the very beginning stages of the course where we're studying basic musical terms such as names of notes, sharps and flats, how chords are formed, etc. But by the end of this overview, we'll move through the intermediate as well as the advanced sections of the course where you'll see how the technique of rhythmic patterns will enable you to play by ear amazingly well within a short period of time. As we move through this video, you might hear me refer to the workbook that comes with the course. Of course, you don't have the workbook in front of you, but it's highly illustrated and it expands on the concepts shown in the course video. So with that in mind, let's jump right into the video from the course. Here's a sample from the very beginning section of the course. Here's where we're learning beginning concepts. Page three, sharps. Now this is a musical term you're gonna run into all the time. It's very simple. To make any note sharp, play the very next note to the right. Okay, I've picked a C right in the middle of the piano. Now I'd like you to play a C sharp. The definition says play the very next note to the right. And common sense might tell you to play this, but watch out. There's a note that's even closer. This black note is just to the right of C. Okay, now don't get hung up on the colors of notes. You'll hear me say that a billion times in this course. The black note is just to the right of C, so that's C sharp. The most important thing in music is not the colors of notes, right? The most important thing in music is the distances or the intervals between notes. You're going to hear that a lot. Intervals means the distances between notes. So these notes are right next to each other. This note is just to the right of C, so that's C sharp. Let's do a couple more. Since this is an overview of the full course, let's move ahead. Here's the section of the course where we're learning a simple pattern that will enable you to find any major or minor chord on the piano. Let's build an E flat major chord. Okay, we're going to use the tetrachord plus a whole step pattern. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat. Aren't you glad I don't have you memorize lists and lists of notes and the construction of chords? They fill up a whole wall. All you got to remember is whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, and you got it, right? Then to make a major chord out of this, at this point, the course jumps right into music, and you'll learn to use these simple chords to play simple songs. Let's take a look at the video from the very first song. For now, we'll skip over the first section, which is where we study in detail how to form each chord of this simple song. Let's jump right to the section where we're simply stringing the chords together to form the song like this. Oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam where the deer and the antelope play where seldom is heard a discouraging word and the skies are not cloudy all day let's stretch this out just a bit let's start using your left hand now i want you to think of a tree the roots are on the bottom the very next thing that the course teaches you is to learn to break up simple chords into something called rhythmic patterns. Rhythmic patterns give rhythm and structure to the song. The very simplest rhythmic pattern is one where the right hand is simply rocking back and forth over the chords of a song. This section of the video is a few songs into the course. We'll jump ahead in the video to the end of the song where we've studied all the chords and this new rhythmic pattern. And here's what it sounds like when we put that all together. Michael rode the boat ashore, hallelujah. 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 As the course progresses, you'll learn more and more rhythmic patterns. In addition, you'll learn how to mix and match all of these rhythmic patterns 
any way that you'd like to create your own unique arrangements of any song by ear. This is a fantastic way to learn to play. Let's jump way ahead in the course now. When you've made it all the way to the section that you're about to see, you'll have already studied many different chords in detail. You'll also have started to learn how to mix and match intermediate rhythmic patterns. Now in the interest of growing and learning and expanding your musical knowledge, we're going to do something a little different with this song again. Above each chord in the song, you'll see a small number one or a number two. Those numbers correspond to patterns number one or number two. Basically, I've gone through and I've decided, hey, pattern number one sounds good, or pattern number two sounds good here, or pattern number one sounds good a couple times in a row. I've just arbitrarily made up my own arrangement. I'm doing that to make a point. I want you to really get the idea that you can take any of these rhythmic patterns that I'm presenting in the course. You can take them and mix and match them up any way you want. Over any chord. Now let's jump ahead to the point where we've already studied and have begun to use some of these intermediate level rhythmic patterns. Keep in mind, you're not seeing the workbook which shows the rhythmic patterns in detail. Here's that video. So the entire right hand for both patterns sounds like this over G. How pretty that is. Okay, now the left hand is pretty simple, isn't it? It's just holding a whole note. In G it would sound like this. So hands together, here it is. Now pattern number two, the right hand is exactly the same. The left hand now has half notes. Remember half notes get two beats. So the left hand is going to play the root for the first two beats. Here's a section where we're looking at the same rhythmic pattern over a different chord. See how these different patterns just evoke different sounds and different moods. The two is a really nice color to start adding to your chords. Let's look at the second pattern where the left hand changes from the root to the third over the chord C. Now let's move to the section where we're stringing these chords and rhythmic patterns together to form a complete song. And as you're watching the upcoming video, notice that even though I'm playing just a couple different rhythmic patterns, my hands are moving all over the keyboard, which is very similar to someone who's been playing for many years. From this valley they say you are going we will miss your bright eyes and sweet smile For they say you are taking the sunshine That has brightened our pathways a while Come and sit by my side if you love me Do not hasten to bid me adieu just remember the Red River Valley And the one who has loved you so true Moving ahead, by this point of the course, you've learned how chords are put together and how to use them in a song. But even more importantly, you've learned how to break these chords up into many different rhythmic patterns, which can be mixed and matched any way that you like to create fantastic arrangements of any song by ear. Now, moving on to more songs and patterns, you'll see that we're only on page 30 of the workbook, but already we're studying through rhythmic patterns that will really free up your hands and help you to cut loose on the keyboard. Now I hope you got a good night's sleep because I'm going to ask a lot of you in this song. I'm going to ask you to be creative. This is where the fun really begins. Page 30 and 31. The song is Nobody Knows the Trouble I've Seen. My, my, my. Okay, look above each chord. You'll see three circles. The first time we learn this song, we'll play the pattern that's written in the first circle above each chord. The second time we learn this song, we're going to play the pattern that's written in the second circle above each chord. And the last time we learn this song, we're going to play the pattern that's written in the third circle above each chord. But look at that. There's nothing written in the third circle above each chord. I hope you can guess why. I want you to come up with your own arrangement. Let's begin by looking at the first circle above each chord. So we're just going to completely ignore circles two and three for now. We're going to pretend they don't even exist. 
Again, we'll skip over the first section, which is where we go through the workbook and study all of the chords and the rhythmic patterns of the song in extreme detail. Let's go to where we're playing more of these intermediate level rhythmic patterns over the chords of this song. Okay, third line of the song, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Man, you are singing the blues. Pattern number one over F. Pattern number two over B flat. Okay, above the word trouble, we're going to do pattern number three. Let's start really low. Wasn't that pretty? Okay, the right hand is going to do this. Together. Okay, the treble I've seen. Now the chord is D minor. The pattern is four. The last line. All right, let's see the final product of this song. Let's skip ahead to the end of the song where we're playing all of the chords and the rhythmic patterns together. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen Nobody knows my sorrow Nobody knows the trouble I've seen Glory, hallelujah All right, just to show you some variety and how you can mix all these patterns up, I'm going to do the same thing again. This time I'm going to play the patterns that are written in the second circle. Above. From this point on in the course, you'll learn many new advanced rhythmic patterns. In the final sections, the focus is on teaching you to mix and match all of these patterns any way that you'd like to come up with your own unique arrangements of any song by ear on the keyboard. In addition, you'll spend time learning how to create your own new patterns with your own sound. Isn't that what you'd like to do? I know it is, because at this point, hundreds of thousands of students have gone through pattern piano and keyboard and have written back to us that they're finally free to play anything they'd like on the keyboard. It's an awesome technique. Now, how far can you take the rhythmic patterns technique? Let me give you an example. I'll play the video again, but this time I'll take many very advanced rhythmic patterns and I'll string them together in my own unique way to create my own arrangement of an old song completely by ear. You can't believe how much fun this is to do. Here's that video. I'm just a poor wayfaring stranger Traveling through this world of woe But there's no sickness, toil or danger In that bright land I call my home Now that was a lot of advanced rhythmic patterns, but it also included a lot of elements from our other courses. In fact, if you check out our website, you'll see there's a huge library of video piano lessons that focus on many different styles. Styles such as the blues, jazz and gospel, worship music, Latin, pop, rock and roll, the list goes on. In addition, we've got many lessons dealing with music theory, ear training, etc. All these elements come into play if you really want to become a creative musician. So thanks for taking the time to listen today. This has been a quick overview of the course titled Pattern Piano and Keyboard. My name is David Sprunger from PlayPianoToday.com. Now you know what to do. Go practice.